else that look. I just don't want it to end up in my foot. <laughs> just his foot. Yeah, or anyone's foot. Yeah, good, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm rusty. <laughs> this is <good>. this is... <laughs> I can tell the camera's going to be pointed at me any second. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm even writing my own comments. Oh, no. All right, let's go. We're rolling? Yep. We're good. Do we have any music? Um, <laughs> man, I am rusty. Stop it. <laughs> okay, let's go. Do we have some people there? Yep. That's it? Yep. Hello, everyone. Oh, g'day, everyone. How are you? Sorry for the short notice on this one. Are you sure there's 10 there? There's plenty. Okay, yep. There's plenty. Yep. It's been a long time since... Um, since I've been here on this side of the camera doing some fly tying, but anyway, it's good to be back. It's December, it's summer, top water's happening, it's fishing season, not tying season, so they say. But I've um, been doing a fair bit on the brim and the bass and the estuary perch lately, especially since the cicadas have been buzzing their head off. So I've put a few photos of um, of this fly going out there and then I, I suppose I've had a few questions about it as well about could I do a quick tie of it and that sort of thing so I'll just do a simple ver I'll just do a version of it instead of the double stinger on the front I'll just have a um a single stinger for the for the live tie but that's because I ran out of pre-tied doubles so I've got some more on order but um anyway you'll get the uh, you'll get the concept really simple fly to tie and um, just got a real nice profile about it. It's nice and nice and slim, um, so that it, you know, the brim tend to like it, the EPs like it, the bass love it. And then just some red little legs and some translucent red eyes. But anyway, it could be pretty rusty. <laughs> um, could be pretty rusty tonight. <laughs> Anything could happen. From so. Bed. For those of you that haven't um, seen this kind of thing before, welcome. And for those that have seen it before, with a few episodes being done through COVID, welcome back. Um, there's a few materials to get through just for a, a simple fly, but not but not too many. So we'll start with the thread. It's that um, 210 Denier in Danville's flat waxed black. But uh, you could do this fly in any sort of color that you want. The hook that we're using is uh, the Kona UMS in the size 2. Uh, another good hook to use would be the Arex SA220 in the size 4. Um, either of those models is probably the best two in my opinion for this pattern. Um, if you are making your own um, assists, <laughs> assists rather than um, buying pre-tied ones like I do, then you would be looking at um, the trailer hook series from Arex. So this is a size six. Um, I would, if I was running two, I'd do it in a size eight. Um, but for the purpose of the video, I thought that I would put a six on. It's a little bit bigger. Um, you might be able to see it a bit clearer in the in the um in the tying sequence to rig that you need some senyo's intruder wire this is the thin i think yeah this is the thin so it is really thin so it fits through the, the tiny eye of that hook and i've sort of got one that's pre-rigged um just here I had another one, but I've lost it. So we have to find it after we do this. It's in the carpet. It's in the carpet somewhere. Um, for the top, we're gonna we're using some of the new Upavon foam from Hairline. So this is probably might be the first time that you've seen this. Really been liking 
time with this. It seems to be stretchy and strong and seems to be pretty durable. So it's a bit thicker than your standard two mil, not quite as thick as three. Um, but yeah, it's really nice, really nice foam to tie with. It's got a lot of tolerance in it, so you'll see that when I when I um, tie down on it with the thread. Some medium round rubber legs in red. Um, they just come in a strip. We sell those in by the packet like that, or in a multi pack. Uh, at the front, you will want some tube fly um, tube or hook holding tube in the small. So. That's a multi-pack, you can just get it in clear. Um, in the multi-pack, the colors tend to bleed a little bit through the clear, but that doesn't really worry me too much. Just gonna use a little section of that. And then around the head, we're using some Semplify uh, Predator Fiber in black, which my packet doesn't look as good as that, but anyway. And then some Crystal Flash, we're using Root Beer in the color. That's obviously not a brand new packet. This is my packet. And for the eyes, we're using the Easy Shrimp in Translucent Red. Seems to be a really good color. Um, but again, if you've got these, these sorts of eyes, you know, you could sort of put whatever, you know, whatever color combo that you wanted. You know, if you wanted like a chartreuse green leg, then you'd use a chartreuse green eye just to give it a bit of um, coloration. And then for the body, I'm using Hen's Spectra Dub, which is just a really nice little dub. Uh, it's got plenty of sheen to it. I don't know whether the camera can pick that up. It's pretty wiry. You don't have to use a lot of this when uh, when when you see me um, tie this on, but it's there's a heap in the packet, so that should last you a fair few of these. Um, I think that's about it. And then your tools that you'll need is some scissors to cut your foam, uh, maybe a, a dubbing brush, maybe one that's a bit cleaner than that, um, just to puff the dubbing out a little bit. A uh, bodkin, just for right at the end. Uh, some wax for your thread, just to help bond that dubbing on. And then Right at the end, we'll use a little bit of resin. So I'm at the moment, I'm using um, Loon Flow, which is their, which is their really thin um, formula, which seeps into the thread, and then just their torch, their Infinity Torch, which is, this thing's a gun. So it's got no dull spots on it, and I've used a lot of torches over the time, and this one seems to be pretty cool. So I don't think I've charged this for about a month now. So the... The battery charge seems to last a really long time, so which is good. Anyway, if you've got any questions along the way, just um, put them up there on the screen. I can't see them, but uh, Sheree will re relay them um, to me, and then I'll try and answer them as we go through. Oh, and the other thing that you need, I've already put this on the hook, but you need like a little uh, a little disc, so that just helps with the popping action. Well. Oh. I don't think Sheree can get that. Um, but basically they're basically they're like a five mil um, gold or pearl sequin that has a little hole in it. So you can just pop that over the front, pop that over the hook with the curve facing the eye of the hook. And that will just help give you a little bit more uh, water push and a little bit of a popping action. Anyway, the hook goes in the vise. I think we've covered everything off. Ready. Yeah. We're good. All right. So with that disc butted up against that eye, we're just going to literally bind it in. Okay. Just like so. And then we take our thread back, uh, all the way back until we're just above that barb okay just like so just nip off that little tag okay all right then we just need a, a tiny amount of tiny amount of this 
just to form the bottom to form the bottom of the head. I haven't really named this fly or anything. It's sort of like a disco shrimp cross gurgler, I suppose. Um, just with a few steps taken out of of the disco that I would normally do. Okay. Might just need just a little bit more than that. Let's go again. Just a little bit. So when you're tying, um, you know, it always sort of pays to take, I suppose to take your time and then just get each step exactly right. Um, as you move along, don't sort of be satisfied with what, you know, if it doesn't look right, just like then, I didn't think it looked right. So you just got to add a little bit more and you want your flies to come out, you know, looking pretty good. I'm just going to trip off, trim off some stragglers, just like so. Okay. And then we need to put in the assist. Okay. So for this one, so with your assist, you can put it hook point down if you want to, or you can put it um, hook point up like so if you want to. Okay. At the moment for the brim, I've been running them um, double hook point downs. So hook point down on the main and then hook point down on the, on the stinger. Okay. And this is where you'll need a little bit of tube. Just like, yeah, probably about that much. And then we're going to feed those wires through the center. Just like so. The purpose of the tube is to give some strength and structure to the assist. Okay. Now, if you have, if you put assists on and they are, they have really long wires on them as such that are unsupported, they generally tangle a lot. And when I say a lot, you're in the vicinity of nine or ten times, or nine out of ten times on the cast, they will tangle. Um, so by putting this tube in, oh, I've got myself on the, on the thumb straight away. By putting the tube in, it gives some strength to that, to that whole setup, but it doesn't add too much weight. Okay, and then what I've done is that I've just covered the hook eye with the tube in here. So the hook eye just sort of sits just inside. Then I've bound down that tube like so. And I actually manipulated the wire to where I wanted it. Um, you might have just seen a subtle, a subtle movement of the wire um, to make sure that everything is aligned um, straight. So along this hook shank. So the hook shank is obviously straight and then you want the tube straight leading into the hook that's straight. Okay. And just make sure you get that, that process right because if that's not right, then your fly will kick um, in the water. So to the side, because the water pressure will roll along that tube. And then with your wires, you want to bind them, bind them down and double them back. The process isn't exactly pretty, but um, it just adds some, some strength. You don't want though, you don't want that wire pulling through. Just cut those off. It's only really thin wire, so I could not, I can just use my normal little scissors uh, for that process. Okay, so then that's, at the moment, that's what you have. Okay, so we've got the stinger in place, we've got the bottom of the mouth, um, or the head in place. And then we're going to put on a set of eyes. So these are the Easy Shrimp eyes in the translucent red. So they've got a, a tying platform on them. They're universally um, symmetrical in the eyeballs. They're got the right length on them straight away out of the out of the packet. The one side's flat and one side's got a little rib on it. So with the flat side down and the rib side up, just lay that platform on and bind them in. 
just like so. And the way that I position this is that I have the junction of the eye stalks and the platform sitting right against the last row of thread from where I bound in the um, hook holding tubing, okay? And then from there, the eyeballs, always give them just a little bit of a kick out. The eyeballs are generally in line with the back bend of the hook, all right? So if you can get those kind of positions right, then you're well on your way to building a fly that's got the right, that has the right kind of proportions about it. Okay, so over the top, we're gonna to put some crystal flush. Is there any questions there? No. No, it's quite crowded tonight. Is there anyone there that I know tonight? Yeah, oh, yeah no. plenty. Plenty, I know. Or that we know. Okay. Just gonna fold that crystal flush over. So there's two strands there, bind it in over the top. I'm gonna to cut that off just at the end of the, towards the end of the stinger. So there's four. If you want a little bit more flash than that, then you can, um, but I'll leave that up to you. But I find that, that that just gives enough flash and enough color at, the, at that part of the flight that it doesn't need, it really doesn't need any more. Okay. Glenn said, is black and red a good color? Black and red's a great color. <laughs> is that Glenn Allen? Yeah. <laughs> Hey Glenn, how are you mate? Yeah, black and don't tell anyone, Glenn. Black and red's a pretty good colour. <laughs> yeah. Um question what uh just wondering what the inspiration for this pattern is. Um the inspiration really comes from the cicadas that are out at the moment. So uh the areas that we fish for the brim and the bass and the estuary perch are tree line creeks and and at the moment um, those cicadas are at full noise and then during their life cycle or you know you know yesterday it was really windy there was a lot of new cicadas being blown into the into the water and then the fish know this obviously and it's a it's a good food source for them um, so they're out out chomping on them I got some footage of once you know one flapping around in the water yesterday which was pretty cool to see. And in slow-mo, it sort of gave me a better idea as to what it actually does. Um, there's a lot of lizards on the bank that are feeding on them as well. So um, the fish need to beat the lizards to them, but also, and they're, they're a real light sort of color once they come out of their shell. Well, the one that I seen yesterday was, you know, like a, like a tan and pale green. So I'm just waiting on some materials to arrive and then that'll be the next color that I do in this fly. So it'll be a tan back with a tan pale green kind of dubbed body with some um, bright green eyes on it. So, and some tan legs. That, so I want that fresh cicada look that's just come out of its shell that's dropped in the water. I think that's got, you know, I think that's got um, some, some potential. So the one that was swimming in the water, I picked it up with my paddle and put it on the front of my kayak and let it dry out. And then after about an hour, hour and a half, it turned black, okay? And then that's generally what the color is. So um, that's of that, that, that big sort of cicada that's probably about two and a half inches long sort of thing. Um, that's where the inspiration sort of comes from. It's that top water activity that's happening at the moment. So there's a food source on the water, on the, on the water film, and that's what the fish are into. Um, and so at the moment, I'm just really purely fishing top water. I'm not fishing any subsurface whatsoever at the moment. I'd literally, I literally take about a dozen flies with me. 11 of them are these and I take a spoon. That's my kit at the moment. I don't take any shrimps or anything like that right now. So it's all about, it's all about the top water. Uh, Mark asks, what stinger hooks can you use? Uh, NS182s from Arex is the trailing hook. Or if you want, um, those ones that you've seen in the photo that I ran out, I tied my last batch yesterday with them. They're actually, um, they're atomic trick bits in the size 
8 and 10 is what I use. They're pre-rigged on those red on those red cords. So um, they come with a split ring. You just push the wire out from the split ring and um, you, you almost use the same process as this. Well, you, you still use the tube. But because they're rigged, you end up with a you end up with a loop that comes out the back of the tube in this in this area here. There's a loop, red loop that comes out. So what I would do, or what I do, is I feed a piece of 50 pound fluorocarbon through that loop and bind it on to this rear section of the the shank. And once I get them back into stock, I won't sell them. But once I get them back in for my own tying. I'll probably do a demo on that because it's just a different process. But again, what it's doing, it's securing that assist wire so it doesn't pull through the tube and then obviously out of the fly. You need to lock it in somehow. Can you use the stingers with braid instead of wire? Yeah, you could, yeah. Yeah, if you want to do them yourself, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah just put some 50 pound braid on it and that sort of stuff, so. Yeah, of course you can. You can do, you can do whatever you want, but the key to it is that those stingers, in my opinion, is that, then this is only my opinion. Um, plenty of people tie um, discos with assists on them that have no treatment and no support and that sort of thing. So it's it, this is just my experience. Um, those wires they have to be they have to be supported just to reduce that fouling. Okay, but you know you can go through that process yourself. Really, at the end of the day, you know that's part of the journey, isn't it? You know, like working learning what, what works for you. This is what works for me. So um, I'm just happy to pass it on. Um, how many fish are you hooking on the stinger? Is it really necessary on this one? Yeah, it is. Put heaps um, eh? Yeah, heaps. Um, out of 10, out of 10 fish, I'm probably hooking at least six, at least six on the stinger, if not more. Just depends if the fish are big the way that i the way that i tend to look at it or the you know my sort of uh, my results would be that the bigger of the species hooks the primary hook the main one so a big brim that you know that um sips at this or smashes this off the surface it's generally the it's generally the main hook that gets eat that gets hooked, um, but it depends on the eat. So if it's a smash and grab, it's usually the main hook. If it's a sip where they the fish come up underneath the, underneath of the fly and just just suck it in, it's generally the stinger hook. So it just it depends on the, how the fish are eating the fly on the session. But by all means, if you don't want the stingers on there, time without you know I. I've got a section of um, flies in my fly box of discos where they had assists on them as well. So it just depends on, on, you know, on the fish's mood. But for estuary perch, I tend to find that the stinger gets, there's a high proportion of hookup rate on the stinger. Bass, not so much. Bass, I tend to find more on the primary. And um, the brim, like I say, is 60 to 80% on the stinger. So if you have a look at the photos that I've been putting up the other in the last few sessions, have a look at how many are just hooked by the stinger, just by that, just by the the just by the lip, because they've sort of been in a bit of a funny mood. They haven't been smashing them. Well the big one, big ones have, but the little ones have just been sipping at them. Okay. Anyway, we're just gonna put a little bit of um dubbing wax on there. One crack open that deep. Yeah, who's this? I need a new packet. Any other questions in? No, we're good for questions. Okay. I think we're good, yeah. Okay. So with the dubbing, we're just putting on a little bit. So little bits of dubbing at a time. And we're just building a tiny a uh, little um, ball of dub just there. All right, and right behind that, we actually want to put our put our red legs. All right, so you can see how little how little dubbing went onto that. That's just a a tiny tiny amount. Okay, 
So your legs come in a length, like so, about 30 centimetre length. And then I just fold it in half and then cut them. So I put one side on and bind it down. And I drag that over the top and bind it down. And then you can just, you can pull them around a little bit. I actually like the legs facing down rather than just straight out and bound on. Okay, so I'll just give them a bit of a, give them a bit of a pull down like so. So that ball of dub there just helps to keep the legs um, splayed out just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to put on a little bit more. And then a little bit more dubbing right behind. Right behind here. Not, not too much. And really what you want this fly to do is to sit down, head down in the water. So if you're sort of looking at what I'm doing at the moment, all of the... All of the work is still, other than locking down the uh, wires and the tube and so forth, all of the thread work is still staying from, you know, from halfway along the hook shank back towards the bend. And then this is where the bulk of the weight is. So you want that fly when it's, when it lands in the water, you actually want it to tip and sit, sit down at, at about a 45 degree angle. Okay. So... And with your dub brush at this point because we're going to cover the top of this over with a bit of foam um, that that head section i just brush those fibers might as well just use the you know take advantage of what's there so actually just comb them comb them down a little bit splay them splay them out but you might be able to pick up that sheen of that uh that spectra inside in that dubbing all right, Shan there tonight? No, I haven't no, seen Shan. Too busy. Um, Craig asked, can you put together a materials pack for this fly? Uh, I will be in the future, Craig. I've, um, I'm out of this Upavon foam at the moment, but there's more coming next week. So uh, once I do, uh, once I have this back in stock, then yeah, I'll put, a, I'll put a kit together for this fly. It's pretty simple. Okay. So we just cut around about 10 mils, about 10 mils wide, and then just a small V, uh, well, a V on the front. Don't know whether it's small, but a V. And I just want to make sure that it's somewhat symmetrical. And then I just knock the front off. So I've got a little flat point just there. If the camera can pick that up. Yeah, it can pick that up. Okay. So then where my thread is, I want to position this just so. Now let's, let's explain this a little bit. So you can see where the eyeballs are, okay? If I can find my little, little bodkin, you can see where the eyeballs are just here. I tend to have the flat part of that V just behind the eyeballs, okay? So you don't want it extended out here too far, okay? Because it's gonna call, it could cause a, a fouling issue. And if the fish hits the front of the fly and you have a big piece of foam out the front and it hits the foam, it's gonna push that fly away from the hook points, okay? So you don't want that. So this is real, it's only a minute detail, but it seems to be um, pretty important. So little flat, little flat end and set it behind the eyes, okay? Don't, not in front of the eyes, okay? Particularly when you're using um, uh, like UV reactive eyes and that sort of thing where it does become a trigger point for the fish, then you want these kind of things pretty clear or pretty clear um, to reduce the amount of fouling or missed, or missed hits, so to speak, okay? And then with your thumb and your forefinger, I've just pushed that down. So that foam 
wraps around and wraps around, forms like a nice little domed kind of head. Then at this point, I'm just gonna fold it up. And I flatten out that, uh, that thread work just to make the dubbing um, go on just a little bit easier. You don't have to do that, but it's just the way that I tie. So little bits of dubbing, little bits of dubbing, little bits of dubbing. That high tack, uh, high tack wax from Loon, that is, that is high, <laughs> highly tack. So it's got a lot of stick to it. You don't need, you don't need a lot on your thread, which is really good. Okay. And then behind there, another ball of dubbing, so to speak. And then we're just going to taper this down just a little bit. Okay, little bits, little bit, a little bit. And we're not going to take this all the way to the disc either. We're going to stop. We're going to stop just before the disc. So you can see with the dubbing that goes on, it's also pretty uniform you know, which will help in your dubbing process. So a lot of people actually have an issue or have trouble with their dubbing, but if you get these little things right by having it relatively uniform along here, then it's gonna help in your, um, in your overall application and then placement of the dubbing. You can control it um, a lot more by having, by having little bits on your thread at a, at a time, okay? And we're just going to fill the back end of this body out. Just like so. Just fill those in. Make like, like a little buggy sort of shaped body. And then down here you can see that I've left a bit of a platform. And that's where my foam's going to, that's where my foam's going to bind in. Same deal with your dub brush. Just pull those fibers down. Go underneath, pull them out from underneath of the of the body. You should be able to see a bit of that sheen starting to mm. starting to come through, and then you get that real buggy. Not 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 like a cicada is translucent, but they do have you know little legs and that sort of thing that you're just trying to represent. Well, the legs are more at the front, but you're trying to represent that. You know, give the give the appearance of a decent sized body, but without having a decent sized body on the fly. And then give that a squeeze. And we just lock that in place by going back behind and then in forward, or in front, but behind the disc. And then from there, we want to whip finish it. So we're going to whip finish in behind the disc. Okay, so one. I think I caught a piece of dubbing on my way through. Two. Give that a clip. And give that a clip. So it's about, I don't know, about eight mils six to eight mils from that disc. Get in there again and just give that another little play around. Pop those fibers out from the edge of the foam. And we're almost finished really. And we get our, um, get our resin. Pop some on those threads, just so it wraps around. A little bit more. Just like so, and the torch. Just give them a good set, and then the final thing is to do is just to trim those legs up. Okay. All right, then where I trim my legs is Just short 
of the assist. Okay, so if the assist bend is there, which you can see, then the legs are trimmed so they're just inside of that. All right, and what that does is that just reduces the chance um, of the rubber legs fouling around that assist. If they're too long, if they're left too long, then you have the potential for those legs to then run through this side and then, you know, then out on the other side and vice versa. So when this fly lands in the water, you want to give it every opportunity that it is going to land the right time every time, you know, so without, you know, without having this twisted around your leader and without having your legs all caught up and up around the assists. Now, occasionally it still happens with the leader and that sort of thing. It's not really, it's not avoidable. This is the most effective way that I've, that I've come across so far. So it's up to you whether you take it on board or not. But by all means, you can experiment with your own sort of concepts and thoughts about whether, you know, about how you want to rig your assist. But that way seems to work for me. Anyway, that's the fly. It's just like a, it's a cross of a disco slash gurgler, but really just in that, you know, black and red. You can do whatever color you want. You know, a couple of weeks ago I was fishing green and the green was going really, really well. So maybe it was the stage of the cicadas that were around. So, but you could do hot orange eyes here and hot orange legs if you wanted to. You could do you could do whatever colour you want, but for us at the moment, black's working really well, or black and red. So that's the fly. Pretty simple. Probably should only take you ten minutes to tie, I suppose, maybe fifteen. You know, if you're not gibbering along. <laughs> but um, but yeah, hopefully you got something out of that. So that's that's about it. That's the fly. So we'll try and get that onto YouTube at some stage, maybe down the track. We've loaded up a few YouTube clips. We loaded up um, what went on today. I think a disco shrimp went on yesterday, and I think the HPU in tan went on about maybe about two hours ago. And then we're loading up the raw. We found the raw prawn um, video, which we thought we'd lost. Um, that's being loaded on tomorrow. Um, so there'll be a reference there for anyone that has or wants to buy the Royal Prawn uh, fly tying kit. And then this video will match, we'll end up doing a kit for this fly. Um, this video will match this kit. So. Um, what weight tippet do you run? Um, I run 16 pound, um, straight through fluorocarbon, oh no, not fluorocarbon straight through nylon when I'm fishing top water. And I fish it around about three and a half feet long from the fly line loop to the fly. Uh, so about a metre, about, yeah, about a metre, metre 10 maybe. So not really what you'd call a traditional um, leader setup by any stretch of the imagination. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I do it that way. 16 pound because I can get away with 16 pound because the creeks are colored in in the water like they're in there in the clarity so I generally run a brown or a green um, coloration through them so they're not crystal so you can get away with a heavier leader the other um, aspect is that we're punching these flies in under trees um, into log into log jams and that sort of thing. So you actually need the leader to deliver through those entry branches, so to speak, that you want to get past and get into the shaded pockets. Um, the third aspect is that the shorter leader uh, results in better accuracy at a close distance. So we're doing a lot of, we're kayak based a lot. So we're only probably casting 20 feet, I would say. Um, sometimes less, sometimes a lot less than 20 feet. Um, so for the accuracy factor, the shorter leader helps. Um, there's a number of occasions where 
the fly gets caught up in that shrubbery. So you need to pull it out. Um, but you know, also then don't want to destroy the snag or, you know, particularly if it's a good one and your first cast goes a bit wayward, you don't want to have to paddle in there and pull the fly out of the, you know, out of the trees. You can rip it out with 16 pounds. Um, what number I'm up to? Four. I can't lost count. Four. Did you say the fish are just burying you in the snags? Yeah, four you gotta just drag is them out. that some of the some of the some of the structure has barnacles on it, so you need to be able to you need to be able to hit and turn that fish really quickly, regardless mm. of the size, whether it's a big one or a small one. Um, and then the fifth reason would be is that we're coming across. Um, brim bass and estuary perch and for the day when um you know the trophy comes along we don't want to be undergunned with a eight or ten or twelve pound leader you know like because that you will lose that fish hands down so on some of them now we're fishing four weights um some now we can barely stop on a four weight with a 16 pound tippet or 16 pound leader so um they're sort of the five key reasons as to why I fish that way. Glenn's laughing. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> That's what are you running, Glenn? Like yeah. eight pounds? Glenn was running eight and got done and got done <laughs> solid. Dusting. Got done proper. Um yeah. so they're probably the five reasons why I fish that way. Um but leader setup has to be uh it has to be a personal choice for the situation that you're in, you know. So if you're in clear open water not fishing a lot of structure then you'd need to start elongating and dropping in your tippet or in your leader size so there's no set there is no set and forget answer to that you know but that's what i do short and heavy short and heavy you know and i'd, I'd easily fish 20 pound you know and that's probably where we'll go to because once you know once again once that donkey comes along i don't want to lose it you know so I got done on 16 yesterday and I got done, you know. If I had 20, I might have pulled the fish back out of the snag. You know, it hit my fly and buried me really quickly, you know, in a submerged log and I I quite could feel it, but then, you know, mm. then the fly popped. So mm. on 16, but mm. I could have had 20, don't know. Could you have turned that fish faster on like a six weight? Uh, probably could. Yeah. Yeah, probably could, yeah. 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 Yeah, I probably could turn that fish, yeah. to, you know, faster on it. But what the but challenge... the fours are so much fun. Yeah, the challenge... Or what I like about the four is that it's also eight foot six. So it's... Well, it's eight foot. It's a shorter rod, which I really like for that that close quarters kind of structure bashing. Um, I suppose, ideally, an eight foot six weight would be perfect for, for what I do, you know, or, or an eight foot five weight um, would, be, would be really handy to have, but... I haven't come across one yet, but one day I will. But at the moment, I'm fishing fours. So, anyway, that's the fly. Any other questions I need to... Nope. No, oh, that's it. I'm good. All right, thanks, everyone, for joining in. Um, do you want to say anything about that? No, I'm good, thanks. Oh, really? <laughs> what is it? What's it say What's there? that? What's it say there? Huh? What's it say? Christmas promo. Oh, yeah, okay. So we're running, if you haven't seen um, some of Sheree's stories and that, that, that we're rolling through at the moment, there's a Christmas promo that we're... That we've got going it's drawn on the 15th at 7 30 p.m so 15th of december 7 30 p.m it's really simple um if you order something through our website you get one ticket so every order gets one ticket in the draw so yeah. um the pack is it's worth about 600 bucks so it's, it's a pretty good value mm. um it's got a stonfo vice in it it's got a loon core kit in it it's got a sight cast cap in it it's got a cnf design lightweight box in it a couple other little i like, think there's a couple other brush, yeah there's a couple brush. other loon tools that aren't inside of that loon core kit so it's it's valued just over 600 but i put 600 just to you know just a nice easy figure so it's, it's well worth winning so but anyway each order through the website gets one ticket the ticket gets clipped to your invoice and then that arrives with your goods um, the cutoff is the 15th of December at 7pm. So any orders in 
by then we'll get a ticket um, and then we're going to draw it live on Instagram at 7.30. Okay? So, anyway, that's it. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Thanks everyone for watching. So, sorry about the short notice, but I just wanted to attend to some questions about this fly. Um, seems to, seems like there's a lot of interest in it at the moment and, and for good reason. Um, so yeah, tie a couple of these things up. And then we'll have a kit ready uh, in a couple of weeks once I get the gear back in. No. Oh, yeah, <laughs> down here. There we go. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Take care. Have a nice Christmas if I don't see you beforehand. But I think I'll, we will. We'll be back. We'll be back on the 15th at least. <laughs> All right. See you, guys. Bye. Bye. I can't remember how to stop it. Ooh. I can't. I can't remember how to stop it, everyone. It's been too long. <laughs>